streaming live around the world, this is Paper Cuts with Brad and Jay. We'll just get this out of the way here. Thanks for joining us on Brad's show. Yeah, thanks for coming to my show. You I did not say shenanigans. <laughs> okay. Are you, are you drinking already? No, I've just got water. Just got water. <laughs> Always looking smooth, aren't you? Yeah, I, I do. I try to clean up for the show. Look, one of us has to. Come on. Joining us this evening, the legendary Ronald Kelly. We are live. What, what was that? Was that you, Brad? Was that, was, was that you doing that? that? I, can't, I can't claim that one, Jay. That's all you, man. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Here we go. Welcome to the season finale. Ooh, oh, wow. Cut. Season three finale. Who would have thunk it that we would have been together this long? Three seasons. That's just that's just ludicrous. That's true. That's true love, Jay. It's true. How you do the heart. Is that what it is? <laughs> I know. It's like, how have I not shut this down yet? I don't know what's <laughs> going on. How have I not to shut this down yet? My name is Jay. That's Brad over there. So we figured for our season finale, we need a legend, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. We went out and got ourselves a legend for the season three finale. And it's always special when we get a repeat guest. Most of the guests are like one and done. They're like, screw <laughs> this. We're not coming back. No. So we we're always We, we try to message them. They're like, new phone, who this? <laughs> I know. It's like right away. So we're always grateful and appreciative when we get like somebody returning. And that's who we have this evening. Everyone, please welcome to the show, Ronald Kelly. Ronald, good evening. Thanks so much for stopping Howdy. by. What's going on, Ron? The, the, the check is in the mail for you. <laughs> I'll be looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So just don't cash it for a while. It's not a very big check. <laughs> <laughs> it's like pennies. So first of all, I wanted to can give you an early congratulations on your retirement because you said you're oh, retiring in November or so. You. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's uh, it's a long time coming. You know. Yeah, the exact date set and everything, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, the 18th of November. Well, all right. Yes. Be a free man. <laughs> <laughs> at least at least work wise, I'll be a free man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, and then well, I, the nineteenth, you're going to wake up. We're like, well, what am I supposed to do now? You know, I got plenty to do. Don't worry. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. I like. I can't. Your output is so high now. I can't imagine what your output's going to be when you don't when you don't have to go to work every day. Yeah, yeah. My, my my brain's just busting. You know, it's ready to <laughs> break open. <laughs> it's it's cramming. It's cram full of ideas. You know. So you're just getting started. That that's what we're gonna we're gonna go with that. You're just getting started now. So here we go. Look it's at like our a, body. Like James Patterson, he's got so many ideas. You're gonna have to get people to write your books for you because you got so many ideas. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be the, yeah, the really. poor version of James Patterson. <laughs> yeah, but you're not gonna have people write your stuff. You're gonna do it no, yourself. No, he's gonna write it himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I wanted to ask, since you are retiring and you've been writing like shorter stuff, like short stories and mm -hmm. uh, kind of novella kind of stuff, do you think you'll? go back and do writing bigger, longer novels like fear and stuff like you did with uh, Zebra. I will. Yeah. I've got, mm -hmm. uh, I've got at least four novels in my head that I, I want to sit down and write now. Uh, probably fear two, which will be, it'll be titled fear eternal will be uh, the first thing I start working on. And um, it, it, I, it'll probably be a big one. You know, I, I, I wouldn't think that I would, uh, would do a sequel to fear without putting a little, yeah, there, there's fear there. <laughs> what, what year was fear? Was that? Uh, it was 1994. 94. So out. we're we're a lot of what was that? 30 years about? Yeah, about 31 years, I think. Yeah. Jay's good at math. I was gonna say, well, <laughs> where's my calculator? But yeah, it's like. So is it going to be like set that way, like 30 years later, or is it just going to be like a continuation? Or it's it's not going to be set in the same time period. It's going to be you know, later on, and, and I don't want to give too much away, but it's, uh, um, if you, if you read my, my story, um, uh, beneath the branches in the season's creepings, mm -hmm. um, Christmas collection, mm -hmm. that story is almost like a lead in to fear eternal. So, Oh, okay. 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 So that would, that would give you an idea of what direction it's going in. So, how long have you been thinking about Fear 2? Because you said just a second ago you didn't think you'd ever write a sequel for it. Well, not very long. Maybe uh, maybe the past year. Um, mm -hmm. Because I never could get a, a solid um, 
grip on exactly what I wanted to do if I if I brought the characters back, you know, um, or at least maybe a couple of characters. Um, but uh, it it hit me, you know. I guess about about eight months ago, it hit me exactly what I wanted to do with it. And I, I set I actually sat down and and wrote the the last chapter. I mean, the last chapter is. That's the way it's going to be when it's published, you know. That's the first time I've ever done that, but uh, um, but I, I think it's a good, solid, emotional chapter. You know, it might, it might make some people cry. You know? <laughs> you did, you did always, the last chapter first. good to cry. That was the was last that? chapter first. You, you read, wrote yeah, it. yeah. I, that's weird because I've never done that before. You know? I've heard of people doing that before. Yeah, but that that is. How was that experience for you? Uh, it's good because I don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> Um, now, you, now you just have to figure out how to get there. You, yeah, there. yeah. I, I mean, I just have to do the the beginning and the middle, and then you know <laughs> I've got the capper on, you know, done. So, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. Do it's you a think, cakewalk. You'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> do you think while you're writing it, do you think the ending will change, or are you preset in stone that that's what it's going to be? That's what. It, that's how it's going to end. Okay. But, uh, you know. Up to that point, I don't, you know, I've I've got a beginning kind of mapped out, and um, and some of the middle. The it's it's going to be a stranger book than the other book because, um, you know, lately I've been kind of incorporating some cosmic horror in my writing, you know, with Dead Eye, Saga yeah. Dead Eye, and uh, and it's kind of it's kind of going to drift into. Fear County, maybe, maybe kind of explain why Fear County is like the most evil county in the, the world. So, yeah, very sinister county. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if nice. you read that, uh, they sort of go through Fear County at one point. I don't want to give too much away, but sort of a prequel to it in a way. I'll read yeah. that part. And, uh, what, let's see. William had a question up here. Any chance of fear getting a physical reprint? And I feel like you teased that maybe yeah. in your newsletter the other day. Yes. We've got, we've got it in, in the works right now. Um, Thunderstorm Books is going to put out a, a limited edition. Nice. It's going to be, a, this is going to be a really special. I mean, I think it's only going to be a lettered one. So, okay. Um, really, everything kind of, Thunderstorm does is pretty big. So, yeah, yeah, this is going to be, have all the bells and whistles and, and some color throughout the book. And, and, um, uh, I'm actually going to do special remarks for all the books. You know, they'll all be, you know, it's not going to be a printed remark. It's going to be something I'm going to hand write, hand draw in the the book and everything. So, awesome. um, plus uh, Brian Keane's done the uh, introduction to it. So, okay. uh, and um, um, Alex McVeigh's done a, a wonderful cover illustration, uh, cover painting for it. So, so that's kind of appropriate because Alex does about eighty five percent of my covers. So, right, yeah. Right. So I went to Alex and I said, I, I'm going to put fear out again. I, I'd really like something that's really, you know, the zebra, the zebra one with the, the kids hanging from the sun of the cave and the cocoons. That was okay. I mean, okay, but that was a zebra cover. So yeah. <laughs> I wanted something that was more, you know, akin to the actual story. And I think he nailed it. I think it's, uh -huh. everybody's going to love it. Is, is that the, the author's preferred edition that you tease at the end of the yes, newsletter? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Nice. That's exciting. Because Thunderstorm, they put out great books. And you've worked with them quite a bit throughout the year. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, actually, I've had like 19 uh, Thunderstorm books. I've, sure. been, I've worked on 19 Thunderstorm books. Uh, so, I mean, there has been a few who that's been like a, a story and a, you know, a collection or something like that that, that Paul put together. But... Uh, but you know, the majority well, I, of them was was my own solo books. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so you're basically saying you're the foundation for Thunderstorm. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just a little a little piece of something. Yeah, you just like the corners. <laughs> I, th I think Paul's put out almost 400 books. I mean, really? Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm not. I I think the last well the last time I talked to him, you know, it's been a while, but. Uh, I'm sure he's put out more than that since then. For uh, the sequel, that's what we're going to call it now for a sequel. Uh, do you have publishers knocking on your door wanting to just grab it, or is that way down the line? Uh, I've already got. I've already got. Uh, you got uh, that set up already. Yeah, Crossroads. Uh, okay, Chris is going to do it. 
Crossroads, they they um, they handle like eighty percent of my backlist, you yeah. know, zebra books and stuff like that. And they're, I mean, they're really great to work with and really fast to work with. I mean, if I tell them, you know, if I want to put out a little collection of stories, you know, they can probably they usually have it, you know, ready in about uh, a month and a half, two months, and we. We get it out there, so yeah, they specialize in something that some of the older ones back mm -hmm. out yeah. and running, right? I saw that on Twitter. I think that they that's what they. I, I think maybe their website says something about it too. So that's cool getting some I of think, these older ones. I think that that's how they print. they started out, like getting you know the backlist, uh, the old horror novels back in the print. That's that's how mine yeah. got back in the print when I came back is. They started putting them out, and that's cool because it's like a whole new generation gets to check them out now too. Yeah, so. yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw they were, you were talking about it in a Southern Fried and Horrified. I didn't realize they'd been around that long because they were starting to do stuff. Uh, what in the early in the late two thousands, mid two thousands, yeah. so putting your stuff back out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they they put out um, um, pretty much all the zebra books and mm -hmm. ebook and and did several of them in um, an audio book. And yeah. I think the first one audio book they did was Hell Hollow, and that but that wasn't a zebra book. That was a cemetery dance book. Actually, it was a zebra book. It was on zebra's schedule. Yeah. Uh, when they shut down, and and of course, when I came back in 2006, I I actually had two full length books ready to go. You know. Yeah, because you'd sent both of them to Zebra, hadn't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it was uh, Restless Shadows and uh, and uh, Hell Hollow was the two that Zebra had on their schedule when they shut down. So um, mm -hmm. uh, Richard Chismar, he uh, he called me right after I, I came back and, and asked me what I wanted to do. And I said, well, I'd like, <laughs> to, like to do a, a novel and a short story collection because I'd never had a short story collection before. And he, he put together a midnight grinding um uh, and other Twilight Terrors, that was, you know, like all my uh, uh, small press stories from the uh, mid-80s to the mid-90s. So that was kind of cool, putting all that together. And, and then we did Hell Hollow. Yeah. Nick here, your biggest, your number one fan, Spooky Noodles. He <laughs> yeah, apparently, apparently he hasn't read all your books yet. Which... He had not read Hell Hollow, Nick. Oh, yeah, he, he's slipping down the list. Nick's in trouble <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. He's not your number one stalker anymore. That's just <laughs> I'll give him some slack. He, I mean, he's, he's done enough for me. You know? Yeah, he's he's got everything else. So. Yeah, he he practically brought fear back into the limelight. So, so now that yeah. I think of it, I think my copy of Fear actually came from him. So, oh yeah, yeah. So okay. he's working over to I'm when I read it a couple of years back. I think he's, he's the one that sent it to me. So yeah. I'll give Nick credit <laughs> on his book hauls. When he would talk about your books, he was the first time I'd heard of your stuff before. So I'll give credit to Nick. Yeah. He's, he, he's done. He's done good for me. He's probably yeah. turning really red right now too. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's a good guy. Yeah. yeah I, I actually met him at the uh, scares the cares last year. You know, he, he came and, and uh, it was it was great to see him. You know, he's a little nervous around me. And oh, we know he's posted a picture everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> he's got it. He's got it in his wallet now, and he meets people. Hey, look who I met. You know, so <laughs> yeah. Well, he says I give everyone that book. <laughs> Every time he gets a copy of Fear, he gives it to somebody. <laughs> so with the uh, follow up to Fear, you're saying it's going to be a, a pretty big chunker, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I'm is so it going to be the? Is it going to be the the? longest one you've ever written what's the longest one you've written uh longest one i've written is probably 475 pages because you think, you think this one's going to beat that one i don't know I, you know nowadays i like to write smaller novels you know because because okay. back in the zebra days they pretty much that's what they wanted they wanted the big door stoppers and yeah and um they put it. They stip. They put a stipulation in their contracts where you, you know, it had to be four hundred fifty to five hundred pages, and, mm -hmm. and sometimes it was a stretch getting there, you know. But uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think the novella was around back then. If it no, was, well, you it, didn't hear about it. It, it was, but it wasn't. You know, it wasn't like presented. Um, uh, you know, like as a so, as a solo publication. You yeah. Know, it, was, it was usually in a collection of novellas. Like um, um, 
Dark Harvest back in the, the mid 80s and early 90s put out um, um, a, a series of hardcovers and it had like three authors and they all did at least two novellas in the, in um so that's that's the way novellas were were presented back then you know right now that's almost a standard you know uh, oh yeah i mean it definitely is in the horror community because i mean it's it's our attention spans are just not yeah. <laughs> not there anymore <laughs> not not in this generation no <laughs> well you know you know i you know i don't read as much as i used to i i'm so busy writing but but i like the novella length uh, yeah. works because you know they that i can you know read one in a in a couple of days or maybe faster if you know if it's right. very well written and it's got a good pace to it and uh-huh. i think it all just because i love door stoppers like it or boy's life but i yeah. love stuff like crossroads or you know tiny things like that it just right depends yeah. on what the story is if the story merits a thousand pages then let it be if it merits 99 pages then let it be that well, you know, there's a there's a lot of I've seen a lot of readers post stuff about, you know, the longer books, the older books being boring, and you know they mm-hmm. they need to hurry up and get to the point and all that. But that's I mean that's the way it was back then. I mean, yeah. they, uh, the readers liked the character um, uh, development and and extra subplots and stuff like that. And uh, you know now it's you know so streamlined that. Uh, um, you know, that's what everybody expects now. It, yeah. I think authors can hammer out several novellas in, in a shorter period of time. You know, yeah. you have people that could probably hammer out seven or eight a year. You're like, take a break, you know, <laughs> write a long one, <laughs> take a year, write a long one, nope, seven or eight novellas, you're, you're ready to go. So, and like you were saying, it's the attention span. Like now we have Netflix, they dump a whole <laughs> season of a show on there, yeah. and TikTok yeah. and all this stuff. So they just don't have, there's so much other stuff like, People don't have the time or the attention span to read a big book, to read yeah. something short, and we'll go watch our TV show or you know whatever it is. I think I think COVID kind of you know triggered all, a lot of that you know the the binge and everything you know. Uh, oh yeah, because when I grew up, I mean your television shows came one week at a time. <laughs> they didn't. Yeah. You didn't. You know you couldn't just sit down and watch. It, it wasn't in summertime. It was always no. you know fall, right. winter. Take some time off. Finish up in spring. You know. Now I remember yeah. when I, I when I was a kid, the original Batman with Adam West. They had two shows a week on that. You know, it was, really? yeah, they would have the you know the the show that had the the cliffhanger at the end of it, and then like on Tuesday, and then on Thursday they would have you know where the cliffhanger you know continues. The conclusion. The yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, that draws you into the cliffhanger. It's like oh, God, I can't miss next week because by yeah. then you're not. Same bat channel. Same, same, <laughs> there you bat, go. same bat channel. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly, I had a question up here I wanted to get to about the uh, Dead, uh, Dead Eye Saga. Saga. Volume exactly. two. Yeah. That leads into some of my other questions there. So, yeah, any word on the next? Uh, yeah, the I, just, I just, I um, just, uh, Thunderstorm is working on it uh, right. for the a limited hardcover and um, uh, Crossroads has already got their part done. Uh, we're waiting on Alex to finish the cover for number two. Okay. Number n- number two's was a blast. I mean, it's a it's a monster fest. It's got it's got <laughs> it's got werewolves and swamp critters and ghosts and I mean, it's got a lot of uh, uh, supernatural stuff and a lot of you know kind of see uh, in the Dead Eyes saga. Um, there's a uh, the way. yeah. There's there's number one. There's a dark witch called Evangeline, and um, and she uses she has a, she actually carries a Necronomicon with her, mm-hmm. and she opens portals. And this portal called the uh, the hole out of nowhere. Uh, she pulls. She recruits. You know, like different um, uh, old gods and and creatures and stuff to fight Dead Eye and and um, his sidekick Job. So, so anything can show up in Dead Eye. I, I even have some some RK Mythos uh, stuff coming. I mean, I actually have the Snake Critter and in, in, uh, uh, from Fear and uh, number uh, number one because they passed yeah. through uh, Fear County. It's like a crossover. It's like the Ron mm-hmm. Kelly universe. Forget yeah, I mean, it's game. been really you fun doing that. <laughs> You know, I never thought I'd even have. I mean, 
until people start getting interested in fear, I didn't even think about doing that. And, um, and then people started talking about my mythos and I didn't think I had a mythos. And, <laughs> and then I started looking at some of my stories and, and things, you know, I had mentioned certain things and other, like the werewolves and, and undertaker's moon and, mm-hmm. and, um, um, uh, grandpappy craven and, uh, uh, blood kin, you know, that, you know, people would, you know, be talking about, you know, some of the characters would kind of reference them and all that. And, right. and so, um, Dead Eye, I mean, I actually had uh, the flying rattlesnakes from After the Burn and uh, Dead Eye won in one chapter. Yeah. So you're you're building your mythos without realizing you're building your mythos, kind of. <laughs> yeah. But now it's, I'm, I'm consciously building it <laughs> and nice. using it. So yeah. So the, the first Dead Eye, um, mm-hmm. and, and I, you know, I'll try to tread lightly with some of the subject here. Uh, Don't but- spoil it, Jay. No, 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 not, not that. But it was released through Silver Shamrock, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, you've been through that situation many times before that happened with Silver Shamrock. Right. And, we all, and without rehashing history of what happened earlier this summer and all that stuff, it seems like you were a little bit more prepared than some of the other writers, unfortunately, because, you know, of course, it hit everybody broadsided but you have been through this many times before yeah um, i, I kind of several times actually right i think you told me what five six seven times actually seven times yeah seven times sure. yeah. that's insane <laughs> it is <laughs> so what was your initial thoughts and reactions well right? it was i mean it was hard it was still hard but because uh i didn't know anything about it people started to you know message me and and i went over on twitter and everything blown up and mm-hmm. yeah and um, a, a very prominent person said, well, I'm never going to uh, support or uh, review a book by Severus Shamrock again. And I thought, you know, that's a kick in the gut for me, you yeah. know, because yeah. I, I had a new book out. And I had the Pond of Southern Fried Fear out. And, right. And, yeah. And um, – and it was actually the pre-order was doing great and everything. And then this happened and, and it just lost steam after that. Cause you know, it was out of, without a home for, you know, a couple of weeks and then, you know, Crossroads approached me and, and we decided all the silver Shamrock books would go to them. And they, they, um, I, I really credit Kenneth Kane for stepping in and getting everybody's, yeah. Uh, yeah. everybody's materials to to the to the publishers that picked up their work and for uh, helping to get our rights back to these works because uh, you know it made it made everything so much easier than it could have been it could have been a, a total right disaster. well I, we all saw him working overtime on Twitter telling people he was you know, with, with with updates and everything like that so yeah so did you did you get all of your stuff from silver shamrock is it with somebody else now yeah it's all with crossroads and okay it's I, i'm glad you mentioned some somebody had said they're not going to you know review a book from silver shamrock anymore that's just take uh, that's taking it out on the wrong person you know that that's, is, to, yeah. that's totally taking it out you know I, i've actually the had, author writer down so i've actually had people tell me well i'm not going to buy that book from you per- directly because it has the silver shamrock well that 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 just hurts me i mean yeah yeah it's my if i have a copy of that book you know i'm i'm gonna get the money for it you know right. several shamrocks mm-hmm. not right um as for i mean they really put out some nice books i mean it was good quality books and everything and it's just unfortunate you know that things went the way they did yeah and this one, it was only out for, it actually came out for just like a couple of days. Yeah. Or was yeah. It, out? Two I weeks. I think it was out it was about a week before, I think. And oh, I think okay. Jer- uh, um, Jeremy, Jeremy Edwards. Yeah. His came out uh, just a couple of days, I think. Yeah. A couple of days before. And then I think Tim McGregor's was due to come out like the next week and his just never came out. And his no, finally no. got a new home. We talked about it the other day. Did, uh, any of the other writers that went through this, did anybody reach out to you for any kind of advice or anything? Uh, no, but I reached, 
I reached out to them and I, you okay. know, I just kind of assured them that, you know, things wasn't, you know, it wasn't the end of the line or anything like that. And, and I actually, you know, kind of referred some of them to certain publishers and, and I actually went to some publishers and, and kind of, um, I, I'm not saying I was like a go between or anything like that, but, right, right. but, you know, I, I was suggesting, you know, you know, maybe you should look at this author's work here. You know, I think it'd fit real good in with your, with, you know, your publishing line and all that. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it was unfortunate. And, um, I mean, there's a few that's just now starting to, I know, um, uh, Chad, uh, Chad looks in, um, who wrote the book, uh, Wormwood with him? Was it uh, uh, Tim Meyer? Tim Meyer, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they just placed uh, Wormwood with um, Crossroads. So, okay. They, that, that's been a little while. I think I think they were looking for the right uh, the right publisher and uh, uh, Crossroads. They're very good. They they put out a quality product and they and the the uh, royalty cut is incredible. I mean, it's that's good. It's so much better than. Uh, so many others you know so mm -hmm. um then they pay mo they pay monthly so that's a nice that's a nice uh payment you get monthly on your especially if you have have as many books <laughs> as i do so, <laughs> yeah. um, actually my my royalty statement is 27 pages every time oh I, my gosh. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that seems like a, a publisher you could trust because like i said they you've been working with them since mid-2000s or so so they've been, they've have, been around for a while yeah yeah it, it, it was cool to see uh there, i mean there was a handful more than a handful of publishers step up on twitter mm -hmm. showing yeah. support to a lot of the authors and then like it, it seemed like for a next for the following month or so after it happened you know people were just like hey i landed a, I landed a new home you know and it was just yeah. almost every day so somebody new was being announced that they landed a new home which was pretty cool that you know publisher other publishers were out there and started grabbing people so. Mm -hmm. and, and it happened on the weekend of uh, ArthurCon, so there yeah. was a lot of those writers that was there at that convention. That you know, and I'm that, I'm sure that was like a blow. You know, oh, they're, yeah. you're uh, meeting your readers and, and try and having a good time, and all of a sudden, bam! You know, right. right. It was good For, to see the community sort of come together and support it was. everybody like that. Yeah, it was. So you you kind of reached out to a few, gave some advice for anyone that you didn't talk to. Do you have any additional advice, like whatever happens again in the future, something that people could do to prepare for something like this? Yeah, uh, I would say don't put all your eggs in one basket. Diversify, you know, publish with different publishers. Right. Um, uh, I would avoid doing multi book deals because I know mm -hmm. several with Silver Shamrock had signed like, um, I, I think a couple of them did like sign five books or something like that. Yeah. And um, the thing about doing a, say I did multi-book deals with Zebra, but that was a different situation. That was almost like having a, a job, you know, a security of a job, right. you know? Yeah. Uh, but I'd say with, with in the indie press, I would go one, one work at a time, you know, as far as, with a with a publisher um you know of course i'm i am doing uh like some of the like dead eye that's a that's a series you know it's gonna have five uh five books to it and then i've got the the southern fried ec horror inspired collections and there's gonna be three of those mm -hmm. but that's 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 pretty much something that i'm i'm orchestrating on my own and and i'll just put it out when i want to put it out and have it ready so um, I guess when you get as old as I am, you, you got a little leeway to do <laughs> stuff like that. But And if you want other little nuggets of wisdom like that, you should check out Southern Fried and Horrified because he's got little sections called Grits and Bits where he yeah. gives you <laughs> little tips of wisdom like that throughout the book. Yeah, that's, I, I don't know how much they'll help everybody, but... <laughs> But, uh, you know, it was, it was fun putting it together and, and, and a lot of, you know, some of that stuff was stuff I'd like tweeted on Twitter and, mm -hmm. and put on Facebook and I kind of collected it together and, and there was, there's a few longer pieces. There were some essays in that book, yeah. and, um, that might help people. And, 
And so, yeah, it was fun, you know, uh, just telling my story and giving a little advice and and doing some top ten uh, list of what I, you know, my favorite stuff. And, and that's how long a, have you been working on that one? Uh, actually, not very long. Uh, um, I guess maybe a year. Uh, I came up with actually, I, I came up with an idea and. I, and I tweeted on there, would anybody be interested in a, like a memoir writing guide for right. me? And, and Brian said, yeah, please, please. You know, <laughs> so if Brian wants it, you know, he's going to get it. So so I, I wrote a few sample chapters and and I really wanted to get in. I, you know, one of my bucket list publishers was always uh, Death's Head Press and uh -huh. um, uh, then Jared announced he was going to you know, open up Stygian Sky and, and do uh, nonfiction books. And so, I, I, you know, I, I pitched it to him and he said, yeah, send me some sample chapters. And so I had a few and I sent them to him and, and he said, yeah, I want to do this book. So so that's how that got started. And so I sat down and wrote the rest of it. It, it didn't take very long. I was, I was just like I was sitting at the keyboard reminiscing. And, I was and saying, uh, did I feel weird, though? You were just talking about yourself right about yourself <laughs> yeah yeah well you know because because you're you're, it, you're not really a character right so you can't make yourself <laughs> like you can't make yourself into a monster you can't make yourself die or you, you know you can't make yourself whatever <laughs> well you know, i don't know some people part. might make him a monster you know <laughs> <laughs> i didn't i didn't used to be as nice as i am now you know? <laughs> just just read the, the chapter called angry young man that hey, was angry man yeah <laughs> I was, I was a butthole back then. <laughs> well, that that's the tagline to sell it. I was a butthole back then. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me now. <laughs> yeah. So what was it weird though writing about yourself? What, like, did you approach it differently than writing fiction? I I just approached it in a storytelling way. You know, like I was just telling the story, and um, you know, I I remember you know. When my grandmother used to tell me stories of her childhood, the way she told them was uh -huh. very much the way I told my story. You know, it was just uh, tried to make it as interesting as I could and and uh, give some tidbits about me that nobody knows. You know, I think my wife read the book and and found out a whole lot of stuff about me. <laughs> <she didn't know. laughs> so why did you tell me all this? <laughs> you got a whole different view now. That's uh, that's uh oh. <laughs> and I know there is. Uh, my oldest daughter's read it, I think, and, and I don't, uh, I think there's some stuff in there she didn't know about me, you know, because they, you know, they just know daddy from a certain point, and then, yeah, and you know, of course, yeah, they've always, they've always, they're in, they're, they're used to daddy being a horror writer, but you know, they don't think anything about it, you know, they just uh, think I'm weird, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like I told you off air, like I liked all the little nuggets of wisdom you had, but more so, I just enjoyed you talking about, you know, your growing up and your love of monsters and comic books and all that stuff. Yeah. I was, I was infatuated with, with infatuated with it. It was fun. That, that got me through a lot of stuff. I mean, I was, I was like the smallest boy in my class and I was bullied constantly. And my monsters were my friends. You know, I'd come home from school and I'd get my famous monster magazines or I'd, I'd break open a, a fresh, uh, uh, Aurora monster mo model box and, and yeah. put it together. And, yeah. and so, and actually, you know, when I reached like uh, 11 or 12, I wanted to be a ventriloquist. So I had like dummies. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think you told us that one once before. About yeah. I wanted to be a ventriloquist. So now that this book uh, exists, people could do history reports about you now. Right? So, <laughs> Ronald right? Kelly book report. Yeah. So I mean, I'm just waiting for somebody to some ninth grade, 10th grade, have to do a book report. Let's do a history report about Ronald Kelly. Yeah. That's Why not? What, in the eighth <laughs> grade, in the eighth grade, we had a library and it had like these little biographies, you know, of all the famous, you know, Lincoln and, um, uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin and all that, and I I read ninety six of those in one year. You know, I remember yeah. my teacher bragging to my mother that <laughs> I read ninety six. But but you know that you know I love I I love to read biographies and stuff like. That. Some people you know they they get to a certain point and then they get kind of hey there's my my daughter Riley hey baby. <laughs> 
Roddy's Let's still got a book report on your dad. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Start your book, your, your book, the history book report about your dad. Go for yeah. It. <laughs> well, she's she's uh, she's 24, so she don't do book. Okay, she don't need to do it. <laughs> I guess, I guess she, she's past that. Yeah, she's fixing. You're to get too late for her. <laughs> she's fixing to get married. So, uh, oh, congratulations! Yeah. Oh, congratulations! Yeah, and, you know, uh, you might have saw the picture of me in my suit. You know, my yeah, um, you're fancy. I used it for the. The yeah, for the video. That's kind of that's that's my wedding suit. That's what I'm gonna walk her down. Nice. There. And she's she's actually having a haunted mansion themed kind of wedding. You yeah. should officiate the whole thing then. That's freaking <laughs> awesome. That's, that's pretty, awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 And we're actually having it in the church, so that's kind of weird to have a haunted mansion. <laughs> mansion you decorated all up at church. I mean, I'm over here like I just had a regular traditional one. I wanted that one. <laughs> uh, they, you know, she grew. She practically grew up in Disney World. I mean, we would take the kids, you know, uh, every other year at least. And so, you know, uh, Riley especially just loves Disney. Anything Disney. Yeah. So, when does Sutter Fried and Horrified come out? Because I know you're having the launch party next weekend on the third. Yeah, we're we're having the launch party on the third on Saturday, and on the sixth is when the official mm-hmm. release date. Did I see a billboard? Hey, you did. Yeah, yeah. That was dope. That was dope. <laughs> we uh, are the the lady. We're having the uh, book launch in a, a restored uh, train depot here locally, and it's been uh, it's been used as art, you know, for art shows and stuff, craft shows and art shows. And um, the one over it is uh, our high school art teacher uh jenny oh, Pena. Cool. and she so she she's really been a big supporter of mine and she um she put together that design for the for the billboard and, and you know it's a it's a community billboard so you know it didn't cost us anything okay. and well, that, that's even better <laughs> and uh of course the other night i had to stand out there for like 10 minutes waiting for mine to come back up just, <laughs> The scroll Cause, through because <laughs> there was all these real estate agents and and like a, oh, okay. a, a cannabis shop and, and all <laughs> kinds of different. So if somebody's not paying attention, they're going to call you to buy a house and weed. <laughs> so, <laughs> they won't find no weed with me. <laughs> like I don't, I don't sell houses, but let me tell you about these books. All right, there you go. Yeah. Let me sell you some right. books. I'll sell you some books. Yeah. <laughs> And you got uh, cool. you got you got Lynn Hansen's gonna be there and Jeff Strand right and uh, um, Rodney Jay Turner. Rodney Turner Turner who does most of my audio books so okay and he's gonna do some readings of some of my stories and stuff so it's gonna be cool you know and I'm glad that uh, um, that Lynn and Jeff agreed to come as guests and that's gonna be really <laughs> neat because we got we got a lot of people from the the books of horror. Uh, Facebook communities coming, mm-hmm. and I mean, I've got people coming from Kentucky and North Carolina, and and uh, Dawn Shay from uh, of DNT, she's going to come up from. Okay, uh, you've done a couple uh, of books for for DNT. Oh right? yeah, after, after the Burns DNT and uh, and uh, Web of the Spider the Spider yeah, Book. Uh, the Spider Book. That's, I just refer to the Spider Book. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what everybody calls it. <laughs> yeah. So is, is this the first time you've had like a big launch party like this, like public launch yeah. party for a book? Say, uh, Jared actually hired a, a a PR firm, you know, to to help promote this book, and and they've really, actually, they have gotten me. You know, I, I don't know if they've gone through or not, but I've done a piece for uh, Publisher Weekly, and uh, okay. one for Rude Morg. Um, They'll probably be coming out. It's good. The Reed Morg one's going to be uh, 10 uh, creature feature books to read for Halloween. And I just finished that and turned that in. And I'm working on a piece right now for Writer's Digest. So that was things, you know, you know, I didn't think I'd ever write anything for those magazines because you know, I grew up with Writer's Digest. I mean, yeah, that's that's about all you could, you know you could find to help you with your writing either that or um the the writer's market you know the big thick hardcover book that had all the places to send your your stories and and to find agents and stuff like that that that's that's about all you had back then the the old version of twitter yeah 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but all the without all the the fussing and fighting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all the unneeded drama and, and garbage. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nick's got a question on here. Okay. How do you create your endings that rip people's hearts out? <laughs> uh, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I told Nick that that that. Uh, uh, when I wrote Fear, I was probably thinking about him and how I was going to torture him. <laughs> <laughs> with the ending. Uh, so, yeah, um, uh, do you, yeah, do you, you know, I get emo I get emotional uh, with with you know some of the the endings and you know like there, there was some uh, um like uh, the Buzzard Zone. I mean, I killed a lot of main characters in that book. <laughs> I actually killed. Uh, uh, Michelle Garza uh, from uh, the Sisters Sisters of Slaughter. You know, yeah. uh, I I had uh, I had uh, uh, Michelle and Melissa in, in that book, and I had uh, uh, James Newman and his family in that book. <laughs> <laughs> and <Kill> uh, <laughs> and no, no uh, Michelle's the only one who got killed. Um, I, I said, I'm going to kill you, Michelle. What, uh, do you want to be bitten by a zombie, <laughs> or you want to? blow up because they were going to blow up they were going to hold up in in the biltmore house in north carolina and and blow it up and then she said well just blow me up <laughs> I, I did you know <laughs> i i think it's it's uh a lot of horror fans it's their dream to get killed and, and killed in the books. books yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, I do it sometimes i do it with like co-workers you know and <laughs> well, the names. I mean, if you're looking for names and stuff you know if you need names because i'm sure it's hard to come up with names unique names all the time so i mean if you have people around you co-workers and stuff just grab their names and do it <laughs> <laughs> somebody gives me a problem uh, at work i tell them uh, you better watch out or i'll have a very well <laughs> yeah. rip your lungs out or something <laughs> yeah. I, I, and this is just me i'm not a writer but i feel like having an ending that rips your heart out is more so writing good characters you're attached to the characters and when mm. they die that's really sad more so than you're trying to figure out a way to make someone the reader feel sad in a way. It's just yeah. that attachment to the characters. A lot of time I don't I don't do it intentionally or you know consciously. I just it's where the story goes, you know. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, fear was fear was a, a weird book. I I woke up one morning and had that idea in my head, and I was going to write a ghost story next for Zebra and. I woke up one morning and I had pretty much had all the fear in my head and I just sat down and started writing and it didn't take very long. It, I think I, I usually wrote a book in six to eight months and right. that took me maybe four. Okay. Um, uh, Blood Kim was the quick, I think I wrote that in two weeks because I, mean, I really, really, I really, really needed the money. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, a, zebra just that zebra would just pay you twice a year, and you didn't know how much they were going to pay you. And if that was your, you know, your bread and butter, you know, you wanted to get those books out, and you wanted to get multi book deals, you know, to uh -huh. to keep it going. So, um, so that's why blood can't. But you know, uh, my my agent told me he said blood Kim was one of his favorite books, and you know. So I don't guess it suffered that I, I, I you know, it just, it just flowed and, you know, it, it wrote really fast. So, so, so you don't I'm, feel like you rushed it on purpose. It no, just, it just no, came out quicker. No, but it, 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 it paid your rent. You know, you so. had to get that story out or it was, it was going to explode. So mm -hmm. <laughs> just fast typing. Yeah. To answer Russell's question, he asked earlier, uh, when will, Fear be reprinted uh, sometime next year with uh, Thunderstorm Books. Yeah, well, it could be sooner. It could be by the okay. end of the year because uh, okay. we're just w pretty much waiting on the uh, the cover, and so it could be end of October, November, or something like that, in time for my retirement. You know, it'd be there. Nice. You go retirement nice party. Retirement gift. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you have? And you might not be able to say. Do you have plans to reprint it with a press where it's you know available on Amazon stuff instead of just a special edition? Yeah, well, we're gonna do the the one Crossroads is putting out. It's gonna be okay. it's gonna it's gonna be the pay it's gonna be the the um, paperback version of the of the okay. preferred. It's gonna have the same stuff in it. It's just um, uh, Crossroads is gonna you know it's gonna be hardcover and it's gonna have lots of uh, um, extra stuff in it that 
the other one didn't. Okay. And you were doing um are the chat books from hell, or are they with Crossroads or are they with somebody else? No, that's with Death's Death's Head Press. Death's Head Press. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh the the first one's printed and the other two are at the printer, so they'll be ready to go pretty soon. And so uh a lot a lot of people uh, pre ordered them in the bundles, you know, with, with all three. So they're so still three, up for pre orders. Yeah. yeah, three of those ready to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. they're they're actually I mine's the first ones. I I guess I had them, uh, I had them finished really fast and got them to them, and so they they released mine first, which is probably a good companion piece to go with uh, Southern Fried and Horrified. So, uh, for yeah. those who don't know, what exactly are chat books? It's just a little book. Uh, Usually, it used to, it was like a novella. I mean, it was just a little uh, thin digest-sized book um, mm-hmm. that was um, had one uh, novella or two or three short stories in it, you know. And uh, um, because uh, back in the small press days, you had the little small press magazines with um, different stories, you know, they're almost anthology-like. and. Right. And then you had the chat books, you know, they would put out, you know, solo chat book of, of one author or or maybe a, a collection of, you know, two or three authors. Um, so, yeah, that's that's and then the chat books went away for a while. And then I came back and it seemed like what used to be chat books are what the, the indie presses are putting out is, you know, solo works now, you know, because. Right. Uh-huh. Um, because they're they're pretty much they were pretty much uh, novella length. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, the terminology has changed, I guess, over the yeah. years. But, but like a, lately, I mean, you... that's an old term. But yeah. I think it's cool that uh, that uh, um, uh, Death said and, and Sidney and Sky are kind of bringing some things back that you know, kind of old school stuff like it. Right. You know, like we used to have back in the old days. Because we're seeing that yeah. word floating around a lot more now on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, know. Other Todd Casling's done some of his own yeah. chat books, and I think Death's Head did a, a Lansdale one recently. Yeah, I think there was, that was yeah. a limited. Are these a limited run, or are they going to be just always available? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I'm probably limited. I'm not sure. I hadn't. Uh, um, I'm not sure if they're going to be like some that's, um, you know, always in their um, catalog, or if it's going to be. Um, of course, you know, they got uh, several other authors that's going to do them. You know, Jeff Strand and Candace Nola's got some, and Daniel Vope and um, um, uh, Aaron Beauregard. And okay, I think Brian King and and Raph James White's doing some. So, and there's several others too. So, I mean, that's going to be several, you know, sets of chat books that's going to come out. And yours are called Somewhere South of Hell. There's Somewhere one, South one, two, of three. Hell. Actually, that that was the title. I always wanted to put a uh, a Southern Horror Anthology out, and I tried to pitch it several times. I actually got it almost accepted by uh, uh, Little Brown, you know, from uh, one of the New York publishers one time, but mm-hmm. um, we couldn't decide on a title, and they just they, they dropped it because – Every title I came up with, they didn't like. So, and <laughs> so uh, that's so that's. But you know, I, I always think that everything works out for a reason. You know, if it, uh-huh. like I, I tried to pitch Dead Eye to Berkeley Books in um, 1992 or 1993, and and they were really interested in doing it, but they didn't think I could sustain like a monster book. Uh-huh. Yeah, because they were they were um, they were used to putting out 200, 300 books in a series, and I had yeah. Dead Eye, you know, battling aliens and <laughs> and Bigfoot, and <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but see, it, it worked out because you know, years and years later, you know, I, I'm putting Dead Eye out, and I'm putting out you know the way I like I want to do it. I'm I'm writing it the way. Uh, because I'm putting a lot of uh, dark humor in it, you know. I have so much fun doing the banter, but oops, excuse me, the banter between uh, Dead Eye and Job. You know, it's, it's almost like yeah. a Happy Leonard kind of uh, yeah. 
uh, relationships. So. That's your happy Leonard. There you yeah. go. Joe was, Joe was, <laughs> Joe was funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I just, it just, they, that rhetoric between the two of them just comes natural. You know, I, I think to myself, well, I don't want to write anything scary in these books. I, I just want to make it funny. Y'all wait for it. <laughs> well, I mean, now we need the Dead Eye Saga to become a, a series on Netflix. Or yes, Netflix yes, or that would be wonderful. Yeah. Netflix, <laughs> come on. You know, come on. You're available. <laughs> what? Well, when we post this video tomorrow or tonight, we'll just tag them. Yeah. Just, keep, just tag them like every minutes, week. 50 minutes in. Yeah. 50 <laughs> minutes in. We talk about you, Netflix and Hulu and Prime and Shudder and whoever else. Is out whoever wants to pay for it. <laughs> they, they need a good Western horror series. Yeah. You know? that would, I think that would go over really well, you know, because with, you know, Yellowstone and mm-hmm. and a lot of the, the Western kind of, you know, you know, I guess Dead Eye is kind of like my my uh, uh, Stephen King, my like your Dark Tower, my Dark yeah. Tower, I guess. But I, I would <laughs> lean towards like Prime or Hulu because Netflix, if it has a good first season, they'll cancel it. So yeah, <laughs> that's the way it seems. <laughs> yeah, right. So <laughs> so with with your chat books, to circle back to those real quick, are they for you? Are they novella length or are they shorter? Like what chat books are nowadays the uh, actually it's like two uh, short, uh two stories per chat book okay one's one of my old vintage ones I, I picked out the best ones that the ones that gave me shivers when i wrote them so um uh, it's got one older one and one new story in it so okay um i i think they they turned out really well and um uh, so I think everybody's going to enjoy them. It's, uh, um, it's, it's, it's some really dark rural stuff, you know, uh, you know, it's not like, uh, splatter punk or, uh, mm-hmm. extreme or, uh, it's, it's just some, uh, my, my Southern fried stories, you know, is there, um, is there like an overarching theme for them all or are they just, no, it's just story. individual stories. You okay. know, they 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 all have a dark uh, rural feel feel to them. So um, it's got that that same feel throughout um, all three of them. Did you get to do the covers for these, or did somebody else do the covers? No, Luke Spooner did those covers. Okay, he's he's okay. doing the covers for all of them, and he he did okay. a great job. I love those covers. I love his work. He does a uh, he does a lot of stuff for Curtis Lawson. And I love mm-hmm. his, I love his art style. That's right. That's where I heard a name. I, you know, he there's is, so uh, many of them that we've seen before. I just the name sometimes kicks in. And you're like, oh yeah, okay. And I know where you saw the name now. Okay. He did uh, Stargazers by LP Hernandez recently. It's yeah. all blue. The guys looking up at the sky. I like his mm-hmm. art style. And speaking of covers, I have to mention him because I feel like I mention him almost every episode. Uh, but Justin T. Coons did the cover oh, yeah. for Brian Horrified, and it is absolutely gorgeous. I feel oh, like that every, I... every new cover he does is my new favorite <laughs> cover that he's done. I'm so blessed to have that cover. I mean, you know, it's we so worked good. together. You know, I kind of gave him a German idea what I'd like to see on it, and, and he uh-huh. took it from there. And uh, he, I mean, I saw it, you know, every step of the way. I, he started putting out these progression. Yeah, um, I think he did yours already, too. Like the other Yeah, he just stuff. did mine uh, like, uh, yesterday, I think, or a day before yesterday. But, uh, it, it's fascinating to see. You know, I've got some stuff that Alex McVeigh, you know, kind of progression photos like that, that he, all my artists send me, you know, we kind of work through the cover and he, they, they do the step by step and send me, you know, the images and I, you know, you know, so I, I, I pretty much see the whole process all the way through it, you know, from mm-hmm. beginning to end. I feel like that has a lot of like almost little Easter eggs from a bunch of your books all on, on the, it does. the Tia Coons cover. It's got it's got the snake critter from fear. It's got like the spider from the Sanguinaire, and it's got the man eating caterpillar from uh, Consumption. <laughs> <laughs> it was in the uh, Essential Six stuff. Uh, Consumption was an old story. That was uh, I think I published that in 1988. You know the with the man eating caterpillar in it. And, um, that was one of those stories that gave me the shivers when I when I wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> I would I'd sit up late at night and it'd be dark except for a little lamp or something like that. And yeah, you know, I, I think I typed that on a regular typewriter and you you feel like something was going up the back of your Crawling neck. Up your neck. <laughs> yeah. 
Did, did you want Justin from the get go to do the, the cover for that, or did you? Yeah, I, 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 I specifically asked for Justin for that. Okay. I, I said I want, but I, I had no idea it was going to turn out so beautiful. I mean, it's just. I love the color palette and everything about it. Oh yeah, yeah. He did. I mean, his color. You know, his color work is incredible. Anyway, you know, I don't think I've ever seen the uh, horror artist that that uses, you know, like the really bold, bright colors that he does. But yeah, I mean, you know, I could be happier, happier with the, the cover of this book. I mean, I'm just, uh, and actually he sent me the, uh, uh, he sent me the original painting. So I've got, I was going to ask us, you have nice. an actual painting of it, mm -hmm. which a yeah. lot of times they do. So, yeah. And you'll be selling prints of that at the, uh, yeah, your party, right? Yeah. I sold a few at scares that cares and we got, I've got uh, maybe 30 more to sell. So, you know, anybody that comes, you know, come get a copy of the book and get a, a print to hang on your wall, too. Cool. Every one of his covers looks like a movie poster. They're great. It does. <laughs> I think he's done a movie po a movie poster or two as well. Yeah. He did, uh, I think he just did one for. Um, um, he did Worst Laid Plans, I know, the anthology. Yes. yes. And I think he did. I know he's done another one. But, yeah, I love his style. Yeah, I do, too. Yeah, he so was he was he was tickled about the billboard. <laughs> I sent him a picture. <laughs> that of his work up yeah, there. that's uh, see his work up there. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lynn. Han I showed it to Lynn Hanson. She said, "Can you imagine seeing your art that big?" You know. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, it was it was cool. I love the so, detail of you with the typewriter on the front too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's you and all your creations. It's like right. you know, but if you, if you will notice, uh, we forgot to put a, a sheet of paper in the typewriter. But maybe I'm typing and it's just coming up in the air. Yeah, it's you know? coming out, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it's it's new technology, a, a paperless typewriter. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the horrors just hover around you. you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it seems like you have so many things done and ready to go and just, and just to be released, but retirement's coming up. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do after retirement? Because these things you're talking about, they're ready to go. So you're, you're, you're saying you're telling us off the air you're telling us at the beginning of the show, you're ready to, to start everything else too. So well, you know, I've how, got... how many things you have ready to go in your brain? <laughs> you just need to put on paper. <laughs> oh, I've shoot. I've got enough to last me until <laughs> they shovel the dirt over my face. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, yeah um, you know, we still, you know, got some of the zebra books to put out in paperback. You know, we're going to be putting them out in the next couple of years. And, and um, you know, I've got the, I got more short stories to write. I think I'll do another Christmas collection. I don't think I can do another Halloween collection. I think I'm all Halloweened out. But, you know, I could surprise you maybe. But because uh, yeah. that, I mean, at the end of the year, between the two Halloween collections, uh, the Halloween store and Mr. Globones and uh, yeah. Seasons Creepings, mm -hmm. I make a lot of royalties off seasonal horror. You know, the, yeah. Um, between November and February, I get some really nice checks. So you know, for you know, for the writers out there, you know, look into doing a Halloween collection or a Halloween novella or something because right. people go back to them year after year, you know, and discover them year after year. Would would you ever think about doing another holiday themed, like a President's Day one? You know, that uh, holiday yeah. in February. <laughs> I actually have an idea to do like a history one, like uh, with um, like different almost like alternative history kind of horror stories you know uh -huh. um, um i actually i wrote a, a, a one called a uh, called the general's arm where uh general robert lee a lee dug up uh stonewall jackson's arm after it was <laughs> activated and took it to a uh the seventh son of a seventh son and and conjured up a whole new Stonewall Jackson, but he was an evil Stonewall Jackson, you know. So, okay, <laughs> and so that that was a that, that was like a novella length, um, you know. So I may put that in a collection with some some other like history things because that 
you know, I, I used to read books about the Bell Witch, and there was there was a, a chapter about where uh, Andrew Jackson actually stayed at the Bell House and encountered the witch. And so I think that would be kind of, kind of cool to bring in some historical figures and write the horror stories around them. I mean, that it's, would be it's cool. historical fiction, but you're going extreme with it. You're, yeah. <laughs> you're totally changing <laughs> history altogether. So Yeah. <laughs> Next is a Thanksgiving one. That would be fun. Do some yeah. Thanksgiving horror. Thanksgiving or Easter. Maybe Easter, some kid yeah. some Easter. kid bites into a chocolate bunny and there's something in there that shouldn't be in there. So, you know. Yeah. I couldn't <laughs> say you because I know you're a big Civil War buff. You could do some like Civil War horror stories. I think that'd be yeah. fun. Yeah, I, I could probably do that. Because you know, one of my favorite writers was Ambrose Bierce, and he wrote a lot of uh Civil War based kind of weird horror stories, you know. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, I'm I, I'm, I'd love to do that. You know, you know, everybody does a lot of um, Western horror now, you know, splatter Westerns and stuff like that. But nobody, I don't know if everybody's scared to touch on the civil war because, you know, because uh, a lot of people consider the Confederates to be uh, almost Nazi like, but right. yeah. you know, I had, I had family fight on both sides, of, mm -hmm. you know, during the civil war and, and so, and I had several, several of them got, you know, hanged. And um, I actually have a, a, one of my great, great grandfathers was considered to be a, a Confederate spy and, and um, actually fled off to the old West. So, so that, I think that, that story my grandmother told me alone kind of motivated a whole lot of my interest in, in the way I'm, I write, you know, like Western horror and, and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, and as, you know, evil as the Nazis were, there's lots of Nazi horror out there. And, you know, the Call of Duty video game, they have the mode, mm -hmm. you know, Nazis or what, or zombie Nazis or whatever it's called. So, and that's more recent than Civil War. So I feel like, I feel like you could do Civil War if it's done tastefully. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I would Let's say Kurt Vonnegut. The Currents at Owl Creek Bridge. It's the best short oh, yeah. story I've written. Yeah, I love that story. I remember they did, uh, Twilight Zone did a episode with, oh. with that story. And it was uh, uh, very, you know, I, that's one thing when I grow up, the, the Twilight Zone. I love the Twilight Zone and some of the old Alfred Hitchcock, you know, presents and all that. Right. Mm hmm so that's that's about all I had, you know. And then, uh, uh, of course, when I was older, you know, they had the uh, Tales from the Dark Side and and Creep Show, um, not the uh, Creep Show, but uh, Tales from the Crypt. You know, the um, the one that had the the old puppet looking corpse looking. Yeah. You know, crypt <laughs> don't don't you have a? Did I see somebody with like a card or something of you? But it's similar to. Uh... Alfred Hitchcock, the yeah, outline. yeah, yes. What, yeah, what, I think I think somebody was doing like an unpackaging that they got a couple of books from you and uh showed that card. Yeah, that was when, pretty cool. When Justin's cover came out, everybody said, you know, that looks like Alfred Hitchcock, or the Southern Fried Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah. <laughs> it was my profile and all that. So Alex McVeigh drew up this little uh you know Southern Fried, you know. Uh, Hitchcock, so I, I put it on a, a laptop sticker and, and I'll give it out. With my, <laughs> that's with that's my what books. it was. Yeah. That's awesome. I'll have to send y'all some. Yeah. And you still, when people buy directly from you, you still are putting your own art oh, yeah. inside. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that might be one reason, you know, but they might have to wait a, a week or two before they get it. Because I, I, think, I think they'll handle that fine just yeah <laughs> you know, people seem to like me drawing in the books because yeah. you know, i'll go to a convention and i'll i'll say i'm sorry i'm gonna draw in your book and, and they say well, go <laughs> ahead you know some people i'll start drawing in it and they'll be going like what's what's he doing you know <laughs> yeah i think that's cool because that's you know that book is like you might draw the same thing in every book but each one's just a little bit different it's all unique for each one mm-hmm yeah, I, I, whenever I put a book out, I have a a, a set image in my mind what I'm I'm gonna draw in them. You know, uh, mm -hmm. like in After the Burn, I have the the skeleton with the Uzi and and uh, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and you know that takes me yeah. at least twenty minutes to draw that one. You know, right? And, uh, 
speaking of uh, after the burn, where, where did that whole concept yeah. come from? It, it's, how many so, stories is in there? Yeah, there is. yeah there's there's a snake critter. <laughs> uh, after it, the burn, they're all connected with like the same theme, which is right, what I yeah. really got a kick out of it. But there's like different scenarios happening mm -hmm. with the same theme. Uh, this, I got the idea for that because. Uh, back in the 80s, I wrote a, a story called Flesh Welder, which was a post-apocalyptic, uh, almost no novella-length story. And and when I came back in 2006, that was the first publication I had. We did a little chat book mm -hmm. with, uh, with that story and an interview with me in the back. And Zach McCain did the, the cover for that, and it just got the wheels turning. And okay. I originally wanted to do... Um, a, like a, almost like a collection art book with, with Zach doing a, lo a lot of the drawings in it and everything, but we couldn't we couldn't get a publisher to pick it up because it would have so many so much art. We actually wanted to do color art in it, but uh, but then uh, um, I like years later I pitched it to Paul at Thunderstorm and he did a, a hardcover uh, edition. Of after uh, you know, I, I wrote you know um, stories and two two novellas and I think it was six short stories right. and put them together and we did after burn and then uh, we brought it back with DNT for a, a, a not really nice uh, uh, paperback and, and Zach did seventeen pieces of art inside so yeah mm -hmm. and I'm fixing you one of one of my projects when I retire is I'm going to do a novel length. It's going to be a novel of After the Burn. It's going to be a sequel to it with some of the surviving okay. characters in it. And nice. It's going to be called uh, After the Burn Exodus. Okay. I, I can been... see that because it, it's because, I mean, without giving away what happens in it, it's After the Burn. I mean, you could mm -hmm. figure it out, <laughs> but you really see the evil within people yeah. come alive in it. You know, we're not talking like, your typical monsters and stuff for that you might have some of the other ones. It's like the people, yeah. the real evil within the people just come out because everything's with the shit, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I kind of stepped over some, some lines with that book. I, I, I put some <laughs> stuff in there that, you know, maybe I shouldn't, I shouldn't have, but, uh, you're, I, you're just highlighting the people could go that long. Right. That yeah. Time. Yeah. Yeah, I just was trying to think up, you know, and I wrote that book at a time where I thought I'm going to have to step up my game a little bit because, you know, uh, people were putting out, you know, extreme horror and stuff yeah. like that. And I felt like my my fiction was just a little, you know, a little bit watered down compared to some folks. So I just pulled out all the stops <laughs> and wrote <laughs> after the burn. Do you and think I, it's one of Brian's favorite books of mine? So Brian Keane's favorite books. So yeah. Do you think it's your most extreme thing, or do you think the stuff in Essential Six stuff is essential? There's a lot in Afterburn that's pretty extreme, and but there's mm -hmm. a lot in Essential Six stuff that I, I've crossed some lines with some of that too, like the uh, the, the nipples and that's two was, <laughs> was one. I mean, just the title alone. You know? <laughs> but uh, that, that was weird because I had an idea for a story. I, I thought, what if a kid got in his dad's two box and found a baby jar, a baby food <laughs> jar, and it had two human nipples in it? And that's all that, <laughs> that's all that came to my mind. I couldn't think of anything else. So I, I wrote it on. <laughs> I wrote it on a piece of paper and stuck in a jar. And, and so years later I found that piece of paper and I thought, what the crap is this? <laughs> <laughs> but, but then the wheel started turning. I knew what direction it needed to go. So, you know, that was a good thing. What, if, if, what if an this odd show ever, Ron. <laughs> yeah. If, if this show ever dies, you know, at least we could say, Ronald Kelly said nipples on our show. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny that you found that note years later. It's like, why did I, what, why did I write this? What is this? <laughs> you know, I had a, I had a coffee can um, back when I stopped writing for 10 years and I would get an idea in my head and I'd write it down and I'd stick it in that coffee can. Well, like two, two or three months ago, I found that coffee can again. And it's crammed full of ideas. That's where all the ideas are coming from. Yeah. Uh, well, I hadn't even gotten those out yet. I found the, <laughs> the nipple one. 
Asia but, scratched the surface. It's just this yeah. is gonna be crazy I, next year. I think I think the day the day I retire, I'm gonna dump that out on my desk and go through it and see what's there, you know. Maybe yeah. me, maybe that'll be another ten or twelve years worth of stuff to work on. <laughs> That'd be fun to go through that and like see if you remember some of it. Some of it's like, why did I write this down? That kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Or if you interpret it the same way, maybe you do remember it, but yeah. maybe it's changed now to, to stay with the way today's society is. You know, mm-hmm. it might have been cutthroat at that time, but now, like you said, everyone's releasing more extreme things and, and you feel like you may have to keep up. So making a few adjustments, you know. We'll yeah. see what, what we'll see what you bring us. So <laughs> I, I like I like to write the extreme stuff, but I like to to write my you know nostalgic kind of you know yeah. fun. You know I, I like to have fun when I write. I don't uh, I don't like to put a lot of dark angst ridden you know stuff in mind like like some horror writers do. Uh, you know when you have you know a cardboard skeleton coming across uh, coming. Uh, to life and and skinning somebody and walking away with their skin. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the kind of story I like to write. You you got that, it's got that, that that's pulp fun extreme. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Pul- pulpy fun extreme. Right. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. That's a new genre. We just created it right now. Fun yeah, well, extreme. You know, I'm I'm basically a pulp writer. I, I don't you know I don't deny that. I mean I I came up with zebra and they're about as pulpy as you can get. Mm-hmm. And like those are. Still my like the eighties horror movies, which are like pulpy, cheesy. They're my favorite yeah. horror movies. Mm-hmm. There's just something about them that I don't feel like can't be replicated today. There's they're just different. Yeah, I, that, you're right. I don't think you know they couldn't pull it off like they used mm-hmm. to. You know, yeah. like if you did it today, everybody would be like, "Oh, that's dumb. That's cheesy. It doesn't make any sense." But pulling them from the eighties, I don't. There's just something magical about them. I guess is the best way I can put it. But you, but you might find that uh, one. Uh, geeky cinema expert like oh no that this is like thrown this is paying homage to this movie and this movie you know and then really dig into it but then mm-hmm. get made fun i'm of. sure someone could pull it off but they're horror movies like i love horror movies today and i love them from the 80s and 70s but yeah they just they're not the same today as they used to be no they wouldn't you know yeah i grew up yeah i was going to a theater when john carpenter was big and mm-hmm. i saw halloween and the thing and I actually saw the thing with my mother. My mother loved horror <laughs> movies and she would take, she, you know, daddy wouldn't go to the horror movies with her. So she'd take me and, and, you know, I was like 11, 12 years old and she'd drag me off to see let's scare Jessica to death or house of dark shadows or something. And, uh, but, uh, when so now the, we know where you get this from. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and when the thing came out, she got to the part where, you know, the guy's head pulled off and turned into a spider, and she just got up and left. She <laughs> just she left. Said, she said, Whoever made this was on drugs. So, yeah, so she got up and left. <laughs> and I, I watched the end of it by myself, you know. But yeah. <laughs> I think that was the last horror movie we went to together. <laughs> she gave up after that one. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> well, Hamlin Bird's got a question. Yeah. Go ahead, Jace. I was, I was gonna say it's fun. Out. It's fun to watch like a streaming service like Shutter because they'll have some stuff from the seventies, eighties you never heard of before. No, as far yeah. as movies go, it, you know, growing up you got the mainstream stuff that were in theaters, but they show stuff that you've never heard of before, and it's just really weird. But go ahead. Um, my top uh, my top movie that I love is Creature of Black Lagoon because that was the first one I saw at the age of six, and that just uh, you know, up until then, I'd only watched like, cartoons and you know Captain Kangaroo. I'm I'm showing my age here, you know? <laughs> but uh, you know we had a there was a, a show after school and and they showed all the Universal horror movies and and the the fifties sci fi horror movies and mm-hmm. and the first one I saw was Creature of the Black Lagoon. It got me hooked and um. Some other horror movies I like was, uh, uh, you know, like Let's Scare Jessica to Death and and uh, a lot of the 80s ones like uh, uh, Carpenter's The Fog. I like that. Yeah, and, that's a good one. Uh, I liked Halloween 3 uh, the with the mask that, you know. Season of the Witch. Yeah, Season of the Witch. I like that one. And um, so, yeah, I, you know, I, I would watch all those, you know, in the theater, you know. You know, back then you didn't have um, 
DVDs or, or even cassettes, you know, when I started watching horror movies. So you'd go back to the theater three and four times to see your favorite movie, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but I, it was I go, a dime. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a dollar twenty five or something when I was there. <laughs> Do you do you like the Scream movies? Have you seen the Scream movies? I've never seen a Scream movie. You know, I, I guess I'm not missing anything. I don't. Oh, I, you know, I'm I'm pretty much like Jay. You know, the kids. I mean, the kids are um, teenagers now, but uh, I mm-hmm. just you know, my my wife she likes her Hallmark movies. She don't like. <laughs> uh, after yeah. we got married, one of the first movies we went to see was Silence of the Lambs, and I kind of I think that kind of did it for her. You know, she. <laughs> That kind of ruined her. She didn't want to watch, and we went. We went and watched Cujo too. She didn't like Cujo very much. I, I, I took my wife's parents to uh, see Saw, either Saw One or Saw. I think Saw oh, that, was a, that was a and horrible I, mistake. I don't. Jay. I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember if we were married yet or if we were engaged. But we all they took it. They wanted to take us out to the movies, and I. I don't know how I was able to pick, but it was. I think it was Saw Two. And they won't let me live it down. To this, and that was how many years ago? And they won't let me live it down today. Impress them, Dad. <laughs> you don't take your in-laws to see the Saw movies. <laughs> I will recommend the first screen movie is really, I don't think the first screen movie is great. You should definitely check that one out sometime. Yeah, I'll have to do that. It's very, very meta on sort of the, the rules of, surviving a horror movie and stuff oh yeah the first the first one's fine first one's good. need the other five or six or seven they're making a seventh one too because sydney prescott's not gonna be in the new one <laughs> we don't need them we don't need them at all so oh, real quick i wanted to go back to after the burn because you mentioned that you felt like maybe you went too far on certain things yeah do you ever do you ever regret writing anything like that I'm like i shouldn't have done that and wish you could have done it different or you just yeah, sometimes I, there. some of, you know, I've got like two different kinds of fans. The ones that like the stream horror that I do and some who like, you know, fear and some of the, the more traditional ones. And I'm afraid sometimes I think, well, they're going to get a hold of after the burn or, um, sexual six stuff. And they're going to get so disgusted. They're not going to want to read that <laughs> stuff anymore. So but, you know, that's, there's that, you know, kind of thing to think about, but. But everybody seems to, you know, uh, I, I kind of give them a warning. I say, well, you you know, you might not like this as much as the other stuff because yeah. it's got yeah. more of a kick to it, you know. <laughs> well, I, I think After the Burn was obviously it, it was on the extreme side, but it had reasons for it. It wasn't gratuitous. It wasn't like just trying to one up itself. It right, wasn't, yeah. you know. I, to, I didn't. I didn't do gore for gore's sake. You know, right. Just... Right. And, and and again, I mean, I've said a billion times that I I don't care for the gore for gore's sake. I don't care one up in yourself chapter to chapter. If there's a reason behind it, if it fits with the story, then mm-hmm. and that's one reason why I, I was able to get through after the burn. Yeah, it was a little bit more extreme than what I normally read, but I enjoyed it. I looked at yeah. it from a different perspective for it. So. Yeah, I, I saw your review of it, and you was yeah. kind of, <laughs> I, I don't know what I just read. <laughs> <laughs> scarred me. It scarred me. Yeah. You're well, yeah, out. some people get an opinion of old Ron, and they think they know me, and then they read something like that, and they, yeah. <laughs> they don't really know me at all. You know? <laughs> Jay, you're talking about that, and that one, the people are really evil, and you talked about a lot in your, your memoir that you like, sort of black and white characters. You don't really like the in-between. You like good yeah, characters. I guess that's just the, the, the old school in me. That you know, I, I like the traditional uh, good versus evil stories. I mean, that's that's pretty much what I write. But, you know, but, you know, when it comes down to short stories, I mean, a lot of times the, the protagonists don't come out well at the end of the short <laughs> story. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you doesn't always have to win. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, some people say I didn't. Li- I don't like your short stories. I, you know, I don't know what happened. You know, to the characters. I said, well, that's basically what a short story does. It brings you up to a certain point and then leaves you hanging, and then you kind of have to work it out in your head what would happen. You know, or the, the I, I like when the bad guy wins. I don't think that happens enough. I love when the bad guy wins. <laughs> I don't think that happens enough. Like, yeah, see, if I had a book. Guy- if yeah. I had a book where the bad guy wins, I'd have to write another one where the the protagonist 
came back and made it right. You, know? so, you got to even it out or the world's not going to You got to do a trilogy. You got to do with your middle one, <laughs> yeah. the Empire Strikes Back, where the bad guys win, and then the, the good guys win in the final one. Yeah. I, I actually, when I was writing for Zebra, thought I was going to do a trilogy of uh, uh, Blood Kin with the. Because I had I had the the whole second book worked out in my head, so I may sit down and write a sequel to Blood Kin. Do it. You got you're gonna have the time. You may as well do it. Yeah. yeah. Because they, you know, they were at the end. There was one character who was still a vampire, and yeah, I, thought, I always thought it would be good to have like this this clandestine group of. Uh, religious leaders like one's like a rabbi, one's a Catholic priest, and one's a Baptist preacher, and they go fight vampires and kind of turn vampires back into human that you know by some process. I thought, well, that might be something to bring in in the second book, you know. There you go, Brad. You, then, you love vampires, don't you? I do. Vampires yeah. just you could say vampire automatically interested in the book regardless <laughs> of what else it's about as long as there's a vampire in it mm. except twilight i haven't read the I, I, was, I, was, I was gonna make a joke about <laughs> twilight but he said except for twilight. I haven't, okay i haven't watched i haven't watched those or read those and have no interest <laughs> they, yeah they were kind of uh they were strange vampires they i, I never I read any of the books i saw the first movie i think but uh, do, you, do you think twilight kind of messed up vampires kind of like uh the walking dead messed up zombies or i think so I think so. Yeah, just kind of took people, you know, interest out of it because it's just over the top. Yeah, I mean, for, for two different reasons. Walking Dead is oversaturated because everyone was doing zombies, and Twilight yeah, right. was just—it was so different. It was like this romantic, glittery love story yeah. just turned people off on it. Bright mm -hmm. lights and perfect hair and. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sparkling. <laughs> the, the one guy was a werewolf, right? And I never watched guy. it. That's just for the previews. I mean, yeah. I never watched. I don't it. know the. I don't know the full history of. Uh, <laughs> you got three old dudes here talking about Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> and if you like yeah. it, that's great. You can like yeah. it. Just it's not for me. I won't yeah, knock I'll you if you like it though. Well, I, I will. You will. <laughs> I will say. Last time you were on, just to segue into something different, we'll get away from Twilight. Last time you were on, I think we asked you if you'd ever collaborated with anybody, and you said no. No, at that point. But, not but at now that you point. Are, But now you're collaborating with uh, with someone right now, aren't you? Yes, me and James Newman are working on a book, and uh, it's it's not a horror book. It's going to be a, a dark um, crime suspense book. Uh, very nice. very brutal. You know, you know James James is good at writing those kind of books anyway, and we, um, me and James, we, you know, we knew you, each other for years, you know, uh, you know, I actually, after he had his accident where the, the tree limb fell on him, I, uh, went out and saw him in North Carolina and all that. And we kind of lost touch for a few years. And then, uh, I think he was on the dead head space uh, podcast and talked about fear and all that. And I got back in touch with him and, and we just kind of brought up that, you know, we'd like to write together and, and we came up with a good idea. And so, uh, so we, uh, we've got uh, about a third of that written and we actually have a publisher uh, interested right. in it. I can't tell you what the publisher, who the publisher <laughs> is right now, but, but uh, that's it, for the Patreon after show. You got to pay extra for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I've been segueing into, crime stuff uh, the past few months I'm, I'm really starting to really get into it so i'm kind of excited about that yeah yeah it's yeah. it's gonna it's it's a per, it's pretty dark you know and, yeah and uh but uh, uh you know i'm i've you know i've always been a solo act you know i don't know if it has to do with you know you know pride or <laughs> but ego or something like that but i always like to to drive my own uh, uh, story and all that, but but you know I'm having fun with this with with James. It's it's been a pretty easy. He's he's co-written with a lot of people, and and he pretty much kind of guides me through yeah. how we you know we do it. We we pretty much like I'll write a chapter and he'll write a chapter and okay, and uh, we send it to each other and we kind of put our own touches on it and and. 
and kind of debate about certain things. You know, would this character really say this or or uh, stuff like that? And there, there's really a lot. You know, when you have when you're writing with somebody else, you've got somebody, you know, double checking your work and you're double checking theirs. So right. uh, it's not just like, well, I I wrote this, so it's perfect. You know. <laughs> But, uh, but for for your next memoir, though, you have to say that there was fighting and, and, and you uh, <laughs> didn't get along at all. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say the next memoir for when I'm 100, 102. <laughs> <or so. laughs> Look, I remember writing with this guy. We won't say his name now. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the first time Bad you've blood. written something strictly crime? Yeah, well, I've written some stories before that had a like a... A true crime feel to them, you know. There was several stories in after the in the uh, in, um, Central Six stuff that was kind of like uh, serial killer crime kind of stories, and mm -hmm. so I've always, you know. And there was a point in the night, early nineteen, well, it was, yeah, it was, it's like the mid nineteen nineties that horror was gravitating towards suspense. I think it was due to the yeah. publisher. The publishers were trying to. Uh, quail, you know, like a the horror enigma and, and call everything dark suspense and stuff like that. And yeah, they were wanting more crime. I mean, I wrote uh, 12 Gauge, which is basically a, a crime book. I mean, there, mm -hmm. there, there could be some supernatural elements in it, but I just kind of allude to that. You never know for sure whether the he's seeing his executed father you don't know if it's actually a ghost or if it might be something in his mind or right something uh -huh. else but uh, um yeah i wrote you know there were several um stories i wrote for cemetery dance um in the early to mid 90s that has more of a crime feel to it you know and I, I can see people putting that putting some crime to an extent under the uh, horror umbrella because mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you, people stretch that horror definition all the time. You know, there's so much different subgenres underneath it. So, yeah, I, I used I used to like to read true crime books, but if I read too many, they get to me. I tell you, yeah, it's it's the yeah. same way with watching stuff on Netflix, like true crime stuff, because you'll go to bed at night and think about it for a long time. You know? <laughs> it's like, did I lock my door? Did I lock my window? Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think those are creepier than, than like the vampires and zombies and all that stuff. The true oh, yeah. crimes, the stuff that can actually happen. That's that freaks me out more than anything else would. Right. Uh, have Have y'all seen the the show uh, net, that Netflix show uh, Mind Mind Hunter? Mind Hunter. Yes. I, well, I, I love so that. Disappointed they canceled it. Yeah. It's and there's been rumors of of bringing it back, but it's not going to be fast enough. Yes. Yeah. No. <laughs> Now I, I like the first season better, but I did like when they brought in Manson and stuff because in the yeah. Son of Sam, that yeah. was it was cool because they actually got people who look like them. I mean, acted yeah, like the guy, who, yeah. the guy who plays uh, is his name Ed Kemper. Ed yeah, Ed Kemper. Kemper yeah. Yeah. That actor was great. And oh yeah, so the big, the big, like, the, that's the big one, the big, right? Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, like, like the, the blue jean jacket kind of shirt on, yeah. or whatever, and the glasses. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to sit down and rewatch those two seasons because, uh, I mean, I just like the way it was. I mean, the the way it was presented, how they were, you know, mm -hmm. you know, kind of interviewing the serial killers and then kind of drifting into different cases, you know. Yes. Yeah. I love yeah, that show. yeah. The first season, I could see why you like it, the way it was set up, and then the second season, it was like, okay, we're gonna put a about the killer into it. The killer yeah. in Atlanta was season. Yeah. Two, right? Yeah. yeah, it was almost, and and the 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 storyline with the little boy, you know, got killed, and his you know his son or whatever his adopted son or whatever yeah. was involved. That I don't that didn't seem quite. That seemed like a stretch to me, you know. Yeah, it, it seems like this goes back to my comment really earlier, earlier about Netflix. It's like they add too much to stuff sometimes yeah you know? sometimes i kind of think well that's that that was a that's a good thing we'll, we'll expound on that but yeah it, it kind of sometimes it, it goes beyond you know what everybody wants actually. yeah because that storyline didn't do much for the i mean they try to put in that he's got the serial killer gene or whatever you know yeah. but it didn't do much for the cases that they were investigating i didn't right, yeah 
It, it actually slowed it bogged down the storyline if you yeah. ask me yeah yeah i feel like that was more set up for what would have been maybe season three or four yeah maybe they just didn't get to it because from season one they've been teasing btk killer and they never actually got to him he's just in right. the background the whole time. right yeah i would have liked to seen them you know go on to to you know kind of expand on his story there, there was a rumor around january they were going to look into doing it again so I feel like that was the like the end game was at the end they were going to catch BTK and it was yeah leaning up to it throughout mm-hmm. the whole thing. I mean, why else would they have those little yeah. snippets in the beginning of each one? So yeah, and because I think was it it's David Fincher right that did it. I think it's David Fincher that directed it and everything. I think yeah, so. yeah, yeah, I think so. Because I think he got involved with other projects and he just didn't have time to do it and he didn't want to hold the actors in those contracts, so he released them all. But I would love for it to come back for a season three because I thought it was great. Yeah, I thought it was too. Nick's got a question for you. Do you have an underrated author that you think deserves more props? Well, there's a lot of them out here, really. <laughs> um, yeah, if you could, re- just if you could name one, so you're not here all day. <laughs> I, I really love uh, uh, Bridget Nielsen's collection. She yeah. put out Bouquet of Viscera. I thought that was. Uh, really, it's a beautiful book. I mean, the interior the covers and, great. The covers great, and um, my wife almost bought a dress with that cover on it because, <laughs> as Lynn does dress, you know, does she does dresses and stuff, and but uh, Joyce bought one that had the the bats that made the skull kind of mm-hmm. design. So uh, she's going. Um, sorry, Brit- go ahead. Yeah, Bridge is one of my my favorite uh, new authors, and um, I really like um, Christopher Triana, his work. He's good, and um, uh, uh, Daniel Volpe and um, Aaron Bogard. I like uh, I like their work. They have some extreme stuff, and uh, Patrick C. Harrison the Third. I like his work. He, he can get really down and dirty on it in his the stories. New, the cover for his new book, I think it's called yeah. Grandpappy. Grandpappy, yeah. Yeah, I hadn't big, read that yet. It's a gnarly foot. That's oh, gross. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, w- uh, one of my kids said, Daddy, that looks like your foot. on the <laughs> 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 So thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and Bridget, she's going to be at your uh, your party. Yeah, right? Bridget will be there with, with Jeff and uh, and Lynn, and she's she's gonna be uh, signing copies of her book too. So, uh, and I was hoping James Newman would come, but he's he's traveling on with his job that weekend and won't be able to come. So, now, but well, uh, you got fire him as a co writer now. He's he's out. <laughs> That's gonna be in the memoir. Watch yeah, why they broke up. Yeah, he didn't come to my party. He's out. <laughs> yeah. So keeping along with that, before we hop into this question, but keeping along with that, those are some of the underrated ones you think needs more attention. With all of these projects you have coming up and after retirement, what's going to be successful to you? Does it even matter at this stage because you already have this reputation or do you think you you need to make each one of these a big hit? I don't, you know, I don't even think about them being a big hit. I just... I just like to write them and, and have people enjoy them. Um, See, I tell you, yeah. you know, some of the older books are really, I mean, I put the, the Darken out, which was something out there. Zebra put it out as something out there. I put the Darken out. It's got the, the crow sitting in the middle of the, the doves on the cover. Right. Mm-hmm. And people are drawn to that cover, and, and I, I can't keep it in stock. I am I just put another order in for it. Uh, so, um you know, I, I hope they liked the book because I mean, that was a really weird book. That was Zebra didn't know what to do with it because it, it's got like fantasy and horror and science fiction el- elements all through it. And so uh, they didn't know how to market it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, but I, it's a favor of mine because, you know, these changelings in this book can turn into anything. They, they turn to like the Frankenstein monster and dinosaurs and ninjas and <laughs> anything you can think of you know it was just a it was a wild book you know i, I never realized those were doves on the cover i thought it was a crow 
in a bunch of eyeballs is what I thought. Well, I actually, every time I look at it, I think it's it's a crow with a bunch of boobs around it. <laughs> <laughs> we got Ronald Kelly to say boobs and nipples, <laughs> boobs on, and the, nipples. on our season finale of season <laughs> three. No, 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 just don't tell my wife. Okay, <laughs> let's He's just on a billboard for. Let's He's keep it above the navel and we'll be okay, okay? okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the it's this is the late show right now. We're we're after hours, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so somebody's got a question. Yeah, yeah somebody's what, asking which book I would recommend to start with. I would say fear. Start with fear because that's my magnum opus and, and that's my favorite book I've written. And I think so many people uh, – have made a connection with that book, you know, so I'd say start with fear and then maybe do uh, Undertaker's Moon or uh, uh, Blood Kin and, and maybe some of the short story collections, maybe the Halloween collection. And uh, I wouldn't start with the uh, Essential Six stuff or something. Get <laughs> Read some of uh, my uh, tamer work, and if you want to go a little stronger, you know, you can go with After the Burner. Uh, Central Six stuff. Mr. Glowbones is pretty fun. I thought. Yeah, I love Mr. Glowbones. Uh, plus, I put some artwork in that one. It's got yeah. my artwork in it. I was going to say something that completely just went out of my head. I don't know what it was. I was looking at the comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it sounds like you're, you're going to have a pretty busy retirement as, as we wind down. Oh, yeah. Wind down here. yeah. Sounds like you're going to be. I mean, it sounds busy, but it's going to be enjoyable for you because I, I, I could just see all of these projects you just want to get out there and, 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 you know, give to us to check out. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, all of your projects come, come to a head and then, you know, once you take over the, the horror universe here. Yeah. Right. Right now I'm struggling as far as finding time to write. I mean, I'll, yeah. I'll ride on the weekends well into the night or something until like two or three o'clock in the morning. And, and, uh, you know, when I get home from work, I'll, I'll get in an hour or two, but you know, after I retire, I can get up and I can, I won't have to get up at three 30 in the morning anymore. I <laughs> just sleep in a little and then get up and sit down and, and have a full day of writing. So it's going to be nice. Yeah. When you are retired, do you, do you, are you going to create a routine for yourself where you're going to try to write so many hours a day or are you just going to, yeah, I'm going to, happen? I'm going to, you know, cause there's a lot more to writing than just writing the books. It's like, it's, yeah, I'll, I'll devote some time to do my social media and, yeah. and, you know, signing books and getting ready to ship and stuff like that. Well, I, I think mean, you got to take a break too. So, yeah. I mean, enjoy your retirement. You got to take a break. Oh, yeah. Step I'm away not, from everything. And, I, no, I'm not going to kill myself trying to write books or anything yeah. like that. I'd like to, you know, you know, I, me and the family love to travel and all that. You know, we, we went out west before COVID and we drove all the way to California and back, you know, which was cool. You know, it was a long drive. A long we, drive. Uh, we, we, we rented a van and brought it back and had 8,000 miles. on it. So I'm sure the rental company loved that. <laughs> yeah. But that was, it mean, was fun driving out there. I mean, I love the desert cause you know, I, I'm from, ten, I'm here in Tennessee where everything's green and everything. And, yeah. And you get out there in the desert and it's completely different. And, and, you know, everybody out there, you know, they, they probably come to Tennessee and think that was incredible. You know, but <laughs> yeah. did you, uh, did you draw any inspiration from anything on that trip? Like stuff from the desert or anything? I, I am oh. with dead. I am. Um, okay. So, cause dead. I three is going to be take place in, um, in, uh, uh, Texas, um, Arizona, New Mexico, and so I'm going to draw from a lot of, because we used to go, we'd go out in the desert and hike and hike down into the canyons and stuff in New Mexico mm -hmm. and Utah, so we actually went to Bryce Canyon and hiked 7,000 feet down into the canyon and back up, and I don't know if I could do that now, I, <laughs> the older I get, the, the slower I get, but uh, the more noises you start to hear. <laughs> <laughs> The more the more kids I fuss at on my lawn, you know. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there is there is one thing I want to ask you. I'm not really asked, but just mention from your your memoir that I felt was like the most intriguing part was when you were in school 
they took everybody on the bus to wherever they took them and they gave you all a shot right they brought y'all back and no one knows what it was that was no. just like what is going on here no that um, that I, I remember that i mean i was in the the first grade i was six years old i remember that vividly i remember i mean we i was scared to death i didn't know you know they took us to this high school and made us take off our clothes except for underwear and and uh I remember there was two doctors. You went down the line and they examined you, and then they gave you a shot, and then you put your clothes back on, put you on the bus, and took you back to school. And and uh, like uh, the whole thing reeks of conspiracy theory. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. Uh, well, you know, my mother, my a couple of days later, my arm was all bruised and hurting and everything. My my mother took me to the pediatrician. And he said, "Well, somebody's giving him a shot." And I'd never gotten shots other than, you know, at the pediatrician. So mom, my mother, she went, she went off. She was, you know, contacting the teachers. Like the, no consent for that at all. No. And uh, trying to find out what that shot was. And everybody was denying that it ever happened. And, and uh, they said, well, he's just making that up. You know, that never happened. But, the, you know, there was neighborhood kids that had gone through the same thing and told their parents and, but uh, Mama never did find out what kind of shot Tracking they did. device. Yeah, I could do. <laughs> I always thought I was going to wake up and flame on or something. <laughs> yeah. That's did, nice. you, did you ever get inspiration to write a story about that? Because that's like the perfect seed for science no, fiction or something. You know, that, that, would something. Be a, that would be a good idea for a story. And, you know, that actually, when I was four years old, I, I, um, a coffee percolator fell uh, on my arm, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, scalded my arm, and, and I had uh, scarring all on my arm. I still got it, you know, because back then they didn't do a lot of plastic surgery and all that. Right. And that was like 1963 or something like that. And, um, but I did write a story called Dead Skin, where uh, um, this doctor finds out that there was like this laboratory in the bottom of the hospital and somebody had been doing like genetic experiments, some doctor back in the sixties, all that. And, and, um, and it had flashbacks to where he had been burnt as a child and taken to that hospital. So, um, so and that, that story's in the uh, essential six stuff. I think it's okay. called dead skin, but that, that was, I mean, a lot of the flashbacks I had in that story was actually what I remembered when, when they took me to the hospital after I, my arm got burnt. I was just reading that about you getting the shot and no one knew what was going on. I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> this is such a weird thing. It was. That would be like the perfect opening chapter to a book. Like all the kids are on the bus, get the secret shot. The parents don't know what it is. And then whatever happens, they start to mutate or who knows what. That would be a good book. Maybe I'll write that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we're not going to we're not going to keep you any longer. So you can go ahead and get that story and <laughs> get closer to get closer to all your projects. Uh, Expect it next week, Ron. Yeah, on my yeah, desk. Really. <laughs> but once again, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. We can't thank you enough for stopping by. Uh, two dopes with microphones here, just <laughs> chatting along, and, and it's, it's always great when you stop by. And, and I can't believe we've talked this long. Uh, I, I always enjoy have, spending time with y'all. Y'all, y'all are fun to be with. We really appreciate, appreciate it. it, and and we can't thank you enough, honestly. So hopefully, you'll be back again. Uh, this is going to be it for us for about a month, right? Bradley? Yeah, you have a have a little break. Yeah, maybe maybe break. Jay will write something. You gonna write something, Jay? I I got this basement <laughs> behind me to work on, man. <laughs> yeah, so I gotta get that done. As soon as I get as soon as I get it done, though, I I I, I am required to write some stuff. <laughs> uh, so yeah to answer so hamlet's our, question real quick it's 12 gauge right or is it father's little helper uh 12 gauge 12 gauge yeah. okay yeah and a father's little helper well, it, it, title, right? zebra zebra named it father's little helper which i hated because i, <laughs> I, I thought it sounded like her, a yeah. children's book but uh yeah uh, i i'm i'm actually to blame for that because i'm i um Part one of that book, I named it Father's Little Helper, and they thought, hey, let's use that as the title. <laughs> so that was my I thought. Fault. I thought it was funny in your memoir, like every when you were going through all your zebra books, you're like, yeah, this was the original title, and I hated the one that zebra picked. And this was yeah. the original title, and I hated the one zebra picked. <laughs> that that was always a, you know, you, 
you didn't know until you got the cover flat what the cover yeah. was going to look out or, or what the, even what the title was going to be. Yeah. I guess the best one they did was Fear. And I guess Blood Kin was theirs too, right? Or is that the original? Yeah. But the thing about Blood Kin, the, the back cover copy doesn't even, is nowhere near what the story <laughs> is. <laughs> doesn't do it justice at all. No. It's like a whole different book. Decoy. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's like a, that's like, like a people yeah, mad. Like I thought it was about unicorns and rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the uh, Jack Ketchum book, The Girl Next Door, with the skeleton right. with the cheerleader. The skeleton the cheerleader like, that's yeah. not yeah. what this book is. <laughs> it's nuts. All right, everybody. Everyone in the chat, thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it for your support, all this stuff. Ron, again, we can't thank you enough. Thanks so much for uh, you know hanging out with two dopes here. Totally thank, thanks it. for having me. It was a pleasure. Thanks for coming on. That's going to do yeah. it. This is a wrap, everyone. Until uh, we meet again, glad you had to see me. On September Stay 6th, safe. go by Southern Fried and Horrified. It's an Got excellent it. memoir. Of course, we'll be talking about it on Twitter and, and promoting it and all that stuff. Until yeah. then, until next season, everyone. Next season. Season three's a wrap. That's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Jay. I know you do. Love you guys. <laughs> Love you, Ron. <laughs>